Um, questions? So why is it difficult for Keller to discern the boundary between her own ideas and those of others? Yes? Name? Uh, Daniel. Daniel. Yeah, okay, right. So she says that because, because so much of her, what she sees and hears is not really what she sees and hears, or not, she, she doesn't see and hear, so, so anything that she describes as seeing or hearing is, is actually someone else's description of what she's seeing and hearing. And so it might be more difficult for her to dis distinguish, to, to, dis to set up the boundary between what's, what's her own experience and what somebody else's experience is. How are sensations linked to conceptions for Keller? Or sensations like conceptions. Yes, uh, Scott. Yes. So she she's really saying that she's she, the, her the link between sensations and conceptions for her is the same as with others, which is to say that sensations are just sort of this point of contact with the world, but that the conceptions are really defining for the entire experience, right? And how is Keller's experience of Niagara Falls different from the experience of people who can see? Yes, Scott? Okay, so it's, you know, the base of her experience is the, t is the touch rather than the sight, but that's the only difference, really. And, and actually, that's a very small difference, is what she's, what she's saying, right? that the touch can replace the sight just as well. And what's key is all of the inferences that you can draw from that one sensation. Right? So that one image of Niagara is going to give you as much as that feeling of the vibration. Right? And, and not really more is really what she's saying. Because okay? you really only need the one moment of sensation as long as you have this other chain of, uh, of, of relationships that you can link it to. Okay. Other questions? No? So for next week, we're going to be starting with Steven Pinker. Please read chapters 1 to 3 for next week, for next Monday. Okay.